essentially tell your team first team plays defense going to win this game? Yeah, I mean, at halftime, I, I just, you know, my, my mantra was this is the most important half of the season coming up because it's the half that we're about to play. And the defense in that first half was just non-existent. I, I, you can see Moses Moody to start the game. I mean, give that kid a lot of credit. He, he came out and played great, especially at 22 of his 30 in the first half. So we weren't ready. We weren't locked in. We weren't ready to play. Um, and, and they give him a lot of credit, the whole team, because they gave us everything we could handle. Uh, but the challenge at halftime was, like, we got to step it up. You know, we can't allow a team to put up 31 and 38, and, and their starting group is watching the game back in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I thought in the fourth quarter, 42%, only 23 points. So we played some defense there, um, you know, but 17 threes we gave up. Uh, the best stat of the night for us, 39 assists, only nine turnovers. That, that's, a, that's a great number. Um, so that, that was uh, really good. Obviously, Nicole, another triple-double. So Davon Reed off the bench was outstanding. Um, so, yeah, we, I mean, it's, hey, not every win is going to be like a, a masterpiece. We're going to take it. You know, we continue to uh, win games at home. You know, but we all understand that we have to be a lot better than we were this evening. 39 assists. Uh, do you get a hockey assist? for uh, passing that ball to Nicola quickly on the out of bounds. And do you yeah, assist yeah I, I, I like the hockey assist. Uh, get it in quickly, length of the floor, touchdown pass, and Jeff gets the end one. Yep. You know, big plays like that. Late in the game, we run corner, and uh, Aaron Gordon comes off the two-man game and gives Nicola a bounce pass from the pocket, end one. Uh, their zone gave us some trouble. I thought we were really tentative against the zone. Um, you know, we only shot 31% from the three tonight, but we got to the foul line 41 times. That's back-to-back -back games where we got into the foul line 40-plus, uh, which is just an outstanding number for us as well. Coach, you mentioned the zone. Obviously, it's important. How often do you put the zone in the second half? 131. Okay, so it's not important. Um, obviously, it, it didn't give you give you that much of that trouble from the from the actual field goal. But we've seen over the course of the first few games you guys come down in the zone or the finish down in the zone, rather. What's the balance between taking the open three and getting some shots open from there? Versus working to the rim for the basket. Well, the best zone, zone offense is your defense. It's hard to zone uh, when you come down and you miss a shot. So that's where we have to look to get the ball off the floor in a hurry and um, make them play man to man. Um, to your point, you know, yes, on, on one hand, you have to make open shots against the zone to get them out of it. But I felt there were too many possessions where we just went around the horn. You know, I, I grew up playing CYO basketball. And the best way to beat a zone is through dribble penetration. Screen the zone, drive the zone, move the zone. And we got really stagnant, just standing around, passing around the perimeter. And it was just hands up, Harry. You know, that's what they were doing. And uh, we, we made it harder on ourselves than we needed to. Uh, you know, but ultimately, they got out of it. Uh, they're running out of time. And then we were able to execute down the stretch against their man-to-man. You know, I've said I wanted to get there 40 plus times a game, last couple of games. This is my pregame speech. Uh, no, but to your point, Katie, like um, you guys hear me say it a lot, but, you know, play with an attack mindset, not a settle mindset. You know, and, uh, you know, you, you look at Nicola tonight, he got there 15 times, Aaron five, uh, DeMarcus six. Uh, we have a lot of guys playing to the basket uh, and attacking, which is drawing those fouls, which is what you always want, want to see. Um, you know, you don't want to be so reliant upon the three-point shot. I believe it was the Oklahoma City game where we didn't get to the foul line and we took 46 threes. And we weren't making them, and we just kept on shooting them. So I, I like how we've kind of responded uh, from that game on. I think we're 11-2 and two in our last 13 games. Uh, overall, playing really good basketball. Tonight, not our best performance. But, uh, you know, we're in the middle of three and four. We're in the middle of four and five going on the road tomorrow to Sacramento. So... Uh, whatever it takes to win, uh, we're, we're going to take it this time of year. Coach, will you be taking the entire team with Sacramento tonight? No, I'm going. I'm taking a private jet with a few of the guys. We're going down to Cancun, and then we're going to meet the team back here for the Golden State game. How about that? <laughs> no, the whole team, as of right now. Now, obviously, I'll talk to the training staff. Uh, we had two players leave the game tonight from injuries: Bones Highland, uh, Jamichael Green. So we'll get updates on them. Uh, we'll get updates on Will Barton to see, you know, what his status is for uh, two nights from now. Obviously, he didn't play um, 
tonight after injuring it last night. But a as of everybody else, I believe everyone will be traveling to Sacramento at this point in time. We'll see what happens in the next 24 hours. Michael, you kind of touched on Javon, but on a night where you don't have Will Help, are able to get to have Austin and Javon <clears throat> kind of both elevate into the rotation. It seems like they both give you solid minutes and stretches. Yeah, I mean, you know, Austin goes out there 15 and four. And, you know, this is one of the, the tougher defensive player of the game awards for a few reasons. One, we didn't play any defense. <laughs> so it's tough to give the award out when you don't play great defense. Uh, two, uh, Jeff Green's transition chase down block is, is, is one of the best chase down blocks I've seen in a long time by a guy not named LeBron James. Uh, but then Austin Rivers, close game, side out of bounds. He blows up the dribble handoff with Jordan Poole, gets the steal, gets the layup. And I thought Austin, who won the, uh, the award tonight, had lots of really good defensive possessions throughout the game. Uh, but yeah, Davon, you know, he's, I watch him work every day. And I said, I joked with him uh, before the game. I said, you know, you got any shots left in that clip? Because he's been working so hard and he's been shooting it so well. And he goes, Coach, I'm, I'm going to stay ready. And, and him and Austin were invaluable tonight. How did Austin react to the news? Jeff was pretty disappointed. You know, he, uh, he got up and walked away for a little bit. Um, you know, but uh, again, I told him, so if I could break this in half, you know, because it's that's probably like a five thousand dollar necklace. You know, I mean, it's got to be at least that. I would break it off, and one guy would get DP, and the other uh, Jeff would have gotten the OG, okay. and which he would have, uh, which, which yeah. yes, they were very fitting OG for Uncle Jeff. But um, you know, Jeff's block was just tremendous. Michael, um, we're gonna go one more after. Uh, uh, sorry, um, sorry. Um, what Nicola did tonight after what he did last night, we haven't even asked you about it. I mean, I don't know how else to ask you about it other than to maybe look at it through his conditioning. Like, mm -hmm. it is pretty bizarre what he's doing after last night and then to do it again tonight. Yeah, and he had a chance to get 40 again if he would have made his free throws. Yeah. And, and I think that's the, that's the true sign of fatigue. You know, he's a great free throw shooter. And to miss seven free throws, I think, speaks to his performance last night, literally putting a team on his back uh, in the fourth quarter in overtime and willing us to a win. And then tonight, second night, but also third and four nights, uh, and he goes out and gets 32, 13, and 15. And, uh, oh, by the way, 12 of 17 from the field. So, um, listen, all the people that say he's not a great athlete, I mean, let's go back and watch the four overtime game in, in, in Portland. Uh, I, how many guys can do that? And just because a guy can touch the top of the backboard doesn't mean he's a great athlete. He can jump high. But Nicola's conditioning, you know, that he's like he loves horses. He's like secretariat, man. He can just run all day. And, you know, it's, it doesn't get talked about enough because he's not the prolific athlete that a lot of these guys are. But, I mean, he played all 72 games last year. Played at MVP level. I mean, and, you know, for him to do what he's doing this year once again, and he won it last year, and all the numbers and stats and metrics you come up with, he's having a better season than he had last year when he won it. And, and our, our team, with a lot of guys out, is playing at one of the highest levels in the NBA. Come on, man. What are we talking about? I'm out of here, Mike. <laughs>